Hello and welcome to another episode of Swinging at Shins. This time I got it right and hit the record button. Today we have Woodsy. Woodsy, how are you doing? Brother, it is, uh, it is very, very good right now to be back. Uh, I've been been gone for about a week or a little over a week, I think. So, um, yeah, bad to back. Glad to be back. And and uh, uh, dude, I'm I'm the the football spot. This is the best time of the year. I'm sorry, it is. Uh, it's not the end of the season. It's not when the season starts. It's now. It's, that's it's my cram packed full of soccer left and right. Right now we're gonna go over. So this. Today's episode will be a uh, match day 14 review and then a little bit of a match day 15 review because um, as we're recording, there are two games, well, two games being played. Um, today was Wolves and Burnley and Wolves beat Burnley 1-0 and currently Luton Town are up. Yes, it's not a joke. I'm not kidding. <laughs> Luton Town are ahead to Arsenal 3-2. to two. And as I just say that, Kai Havertz just put in a goal to make it three three in the sixtieth minute. My goodness, insane, insane! Yeah. This game your is insane. Is, Six goals. I had so I had put out maybe I, three or four. Six I put out my mind. prediction. <laughs> it said six nil for Arsenal, or maybe it was yeah, four yeah. nil. But yeah. either way, like this game has been everything that nobody expected. It's oh, it's just a lofted wild. ball. Uh, oh my goodness! Poor. Are they checking for offside? I do, how? Why? There's God off. There's no offside anywhere. What are they check? Oh, they're not. Okay. No, look. I thought that's what they were looking for. Oh, uh, uh, they're just yeah, doing a million a replays goal. of the very nice goal that Kai Havertz put in. So for you Arsenal fans that had been pooping on him for the longest time, I'm pointing over here because my my screen over here has the. <laughs> game running right now, but for all you Arsenal fans that have been pooping on him, that's two goals. Two goals in two games? Uh, three. A goal in each game? game? Three goals in three games? There you go. Forgot one in the, their Champions right. game. See, I don't count that because it's not Premier League, but I get it, and it, it helps towards confidence, and clearly it's helping towards Kai Havertz's confidence, and the fans should start backing him uh, more so now because of his his confidence is going up and clearly this is the guy you bought for 60 million. Now he's, he's wreaking havoc in the box. You know, it, it, and it makes, it's a game changer to have a tall attacking midfielder forward style in that box. And I mean, he, I mean, he, he just made three, Arsenal go three, three. He's definitely finding space. Um, I still want to see in, in possession. I still don't think he's quite there. Um, but when, when there, you know, when there's a break or when there's a ball that falls to him, he's finally putting that away. So you know, yes. he's not missing those wide open sitters. Um, the, he's not they don't really have to walk him into the line. <laughs> yeah, he's not really leaving. You know, like a lot of times, he's you know, he's, there's balls coming into him, and he's just leaving the ball to go through to somebody else instead of taking it himself. Yeah. So he's yep, yep. actually finally somewhat getting into a rhythm here. You know, he's, he's actually playing a little bit bit of. Uh, defense as well and chasing balls down as as you know anybody's watching the game can see so he yep. um he is definitely turning it around a little bit um i gotta say though credit to luton man they uh sure they are handing it to to arsenal in a way arsenal haven't been headed to all year um no yeah a, a they're exposing them right pieces, now which, yeah and, and and again set set pieces are the way that the luton's gonna score they scored um, via uh, a break on a set piece against Liverpool, they scored, yep. I believe, at least two set pieces here. So, um, yes, that's that's something that they they uh, clearly, you know, are looking for. They got big bodies in there, even though they're missing Lockyer and they're they're missing a couple other guys as well. So it's a it's a pretty um, pretty darn good display from from Luton so far. If I'm the manager of Luton, every match. And I know it'd be beating the drum every time, but you, you kind of have to go out and be like, nobody's expecting you to do anything. You need to go out there yeah. and show them you guys can do something. And this is this is what this is this builds overall confidence and morale in your players and your coaching staff because your coaching staff will get drained out too. Like, don't get me wrong; like players will you'll see it easier on the players. But your if your coaching staff doesn't want to coach because you keep losing, then you're going to lose the back room too. Uh, 
So yeah. being able to stick three goals on Arsenal already, uh, even if you lose this match, um, it's 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 not a terrible outcome because now you know you can play with the top dogs. It's just now you need to put it together. And can you stay up from that point? I I think there's a lot of uh, – there there is a lot of uh, – up against the world mentality when it is them against the bigger teams. They, I mean, they 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 only lost one nil to to Manchester United. They drew mm-hmm. with Liverpool. They're they're getting a draw right now by the looks of it. I mean, they're still. I mean, you got probably at least a half hour left to left to play here still too. Yeah. Um. They. I mean, for 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 what they are, which is is probably the the one of not the worst promoted team that I've seen lately as far as skill set and players that can actually play at the highest level. Um, yeah. I, I'm shocked at how, how good they're playing right now. Um, when yep. they first got in the prem, I mean, it, it was obvious this was this was a big pool for them to swim in. They they should not have been here. Um, they only got here via, you know, via luck or something like that. Yes. But they, mm-hmm. they're clearly putting it together right now. Yeah, it's, it's good to see that there's not just – and that's what the fun about the Premier League is. It's not – you can't just walk into anybody's house and just walk out with a win. You have to play 90 minutes. And maybe a little bit of part of this is Arsenal yeah. thinking that they can just walk in and do this and and just, okay, we're going to grab three points and we're done. We, we can just dispatch you. It's no big deal. And – like yeah. again, like we've been praising credit to Luton Town for not rolling over and being able to stick it to them. So uh, I still see Arsenal pulling out of this with a win. I, I just don't think that Luton Town is going to have. They're just going to run out of steam. That that's my personal take on that. But yeah, I, I think we'll this see one might be. There's a lot of. I mean, there might be a lot of goals in this thing, man. I, I don't know. With a half hour still left to play, I mean, there's. There's errors bound to happen on both sides, so I, I don't know if I could pick anybody yet. To be honest with you, I mean the way I'm, the defensive the defensive capabilities of Luton are pretty good for um, you know at, at at least at home for for a low yeah. level team. Arsenal, meanwhile, I mean the the goalkeeper errors, the the defensive lapses. I mean they're just the the ability to not mark your man on a corner. I mean for, for crying mm-hmm. out loud, I mean that's, that's not that's not the quality of a, of a Premier League winning winning team. Um, no, so this, this is, I, I think this is like a bit of a, a, a bit of an anomaly for Arsenal. Um, Probably. But I, I mean, that's not, not looking good. It doesn't bode well. It, yeah. I mean, if it keeps up, it doesn't bode well, but uh, assuming Arteta would, you know, hound these guys for the next match because of this match kind of deal. Like we need to look out for this, this, and this, and, and that's, that, that'll be their focus for after. Um, now I have a weird, uh, and you said anomaly, and I like that. Do you think that Raya will be pulled? Is there any chance Raya gets pulled? I mean, if I'm mistaken, he is, he's, he's given up. He's he's given up more goals, I think, than than Ramsdale probably would have. Even though I think Ramsdale was probably, if you look at his recent performance against uh, Brentford. I don't think he was actually that good. I know they were they were around him and and you know uh, uh, congratulating him after the match. I mean, the guy yeah. could have had you one down within the first 15, 20 minutes. So uh, yeah. uh, by himself. So I, I I mean I don't know if I can technically say that that they need to pull him or they they should pull him. Uh, they've got two guys that are capable capable to, to do the job, but are they capable to win a, a title with one of these two? Um, I, I personally, I don't think they are. That I was the expectation the of bringing in. That... Yeah, that was the expectation of bringing in Rhea was to essentially upgrade and unlock, you know, their passing ability out from the back. And he is only on a loan, mind you. So he could, you know, Arsenal could, not he could. Arsenal could just walk out of this deal and be like, no, we don't need, we don't need you, Rhea. We'll go find somebody else. I don't think it's a great idea because now you have to yeah. again find another goalkeeper that fits your system and then readapt to that goalkeeper if he isn't, you know, uh, a part of that mindset as well. So you probably stick with Raya and then 
you sell Ramsdale in the summer. I, I could see. I, I definitely think it's going to be Ramsdale out the door. I mean, um, I don't know necessarily I mean, gonna... if if. I mean, I don't think they're going to walk away from the Raya deal. One, I, I think it's a it's a good deal. I mean, for thirty million pounds, not a bad signing at all. Um, yeah. At worst case, I mean, you got a thirty million pound backup if you go find somebody else. You know, there's that's there's a true. lot of really good keepers out there. To be honest, it's not a market yep. that's really lacking quality. Um, obviously, there's a there's a gap between you know the top five, top six, you know, keepers in the world compared to everybody else. Um, oh, yeah. Having one of those is is you know the the biggest thing you can possibly do for your club, um, for sure. City, Liverpool, AC Milan got another one. I would even you know I I throw down a Roma in there. Um, yep. I'd even throw in B Martinez up up in there. To be honest with you, about um, time. A goalkeeper, <laughs> a, a, a quality goalkeeper, a goalkeeper that is that can you know knows he's the number one, can play as a number one, can do yep. a lot of different things, but also make the important save. There's yep. very very few of those. Um, Agreed. You know, I think I think the best one probably that could be on the market would be Mike Magnan from from AC Milan. But uh, mm. this is, I mean, this is definitely a it's it's a it's an Arsenal team that right now they are they are one or two players away. Um, it's quite clear uh, whether it is the goalkeeper, whether it is mm-hmm. a striker. Um, I mean, their, their attack this year. I mean, a lot of people are impressed with their attack. Martinelli just scored his second goal of the season. Yep. Um, He's Last been time missing I checked, time. It's not good. And he's played. Yeah, he's been. He's played twelve games. He's, he's played twelve. Games. That's the same amount that Diogo Jota's played. Same amount that Darwin Nunez has played. You know, it's it's a, again. I'm 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 looking at the stats the other day, and the only one that's actually playing exceptionally well right now is Saka. And and if you know, you look at you look at their attacking stats. Their best attacking so far has been in the Champions League. I mean, I'll, I'll I'll say that they've been a little bit of a different team there. Obviously, you're going up against teams that aren't going to mm-hmm. be going up against physical competition like this. But for them only to, you know, Gabriel uh, Jesus, he's got two goals in the season in the Prem. You know, Martinelli, two goals he's in the Prem. He's been injured a lot, too. I mean, it's a, it's a team that's that's definitely lacking, I think, a little bit extra in the attack and clearly mm-hmm. a, a, a number one goalkeeper that can grab the reins and, and run with it. Yeah, yeah. Yep, yeah, I agree. Saka. Um, What's that? Saka looks to be injured here. Oh, yeah, he got his ankle off. stepped on. It was pretty rough. <laughs> and he also lost his shoe, too, so that's pretty unfortunate for him. But you got to put your own shoes on. Um, anyway, <laughs> let's discuss some match day 14. Yeah, why not? Um, last week, Arsenal won 2-1 against Wolves at home. Brentford won 3-1 at home against Luton Town. Burnley absolutely slapped the hell out of Sheffield, who then turned around Sheffield, mind you, Fired Paul Heckenbottom and then hired Chris Wilder. Um, Forrest lost at home, which is a big surprise because who they've guessed, been playing. Who, who got fired previously? I'm sorry? My, my favorite part about the whole Sheffield United is that Paul Heckenbottom took over for Chris Wilder. <laughs> oh, yeah, I know, I know. I mean, I know. I guess that should be explained to fans of our of our page. And if you haven't aren't a fan of our page you should like subscribe follow leave us a comment all that sort of stuff you know like the things that we would we should do better or you know things that we like doing or you like hearing and we want to amplify more anyway um yeah so i thought that was pretty funny that they would bring back chris wilder i mean look he knows he knows the management he knows the the back of house so it's not like it's a terrible signing and if he's just your interim coach, I don't know what, what the contract looks like, then you can go out and sign another manager next season when you're down in the championship. But, you know, this isn't a terrible managerial signing either. He knows what he's been in the prem, so he knows what he's doing. Um, I don't know what Paul Heckenbottom had done prior to this. Looks but, like the, but looks uh, like the contract is still summer of 2025. Okay, so he's there for a couple, a year and a half. That makes sense. Um, they probably, if they get promoted again, he'll get another contract. But that's making. here nor there. That's <laughs> that's a few years down the road. Um, Newcastle won at home against United, as everybody assumed. 
Bournemouth pull an upset, not really in the sense of winning, but taking points away from Aston Villa at home, 2-2. Uh, Chelsea got handed a win. I mean, I, I hated this match. I, abs- I watched that match and hated every friggin' minute of it. They won 3-2 against Brighton, um, and Brighton were... They played with a man advantage, excuse me. Uh, probably the craziest match of the week was Liverpool and Fulham. We'll get to that later. Liverpool win at home 4-3 against Fulham. Uh, West Ham and Crystal Palace draw. And City and Spurs draw. That was also a wild game. Um, I don't know if you've seen the memes for that. So we're going to dive right into the City-Spurs match. Because Spurs seem to have City's number when it comes in the last few seasons anyway. Um, And this particular match, we saw a, a lot of drama. Um, with Doku getting injured, uh, he came out immediately, just went straight to the, the, the back room tunnel there, you know, uh, Ederson not having a great game, uh, Holland absolutely screaming at Simon Hooper. I'm pretty sure if Simon Hooper had hair, it would have been blown away because of how, uh, how, <laughs> crazy, how loud Holland was actually. <laughs> But this match was insane. It had everything that you'd want. It was completely open. uh, Both teams had no disregard for anybody's legs in this match. Son ends up scoring. (laughs) Son ends up scoring the opening goal and then also gets the opening goal for City with an own goal. That was super unfortunate for him. Uh, When it comes down to the stats here, City end up uh, with 55% of the possession, which is actually a lot less than what they're used to handling with. And they obviously had a better XG because I think they had a penalty, right? They have a penalty or am I wrong? Uh, Or all of their goals were right in front of the... Yeah. yeah. Yeah, Um, A lot of their goals were right in front of that. Yeah, so that, that'll jack up your XG. I'm not a fan of XG, personally. I, I think it's a lot of hogwash, personally. Um, if, you put the goal, if you put the ball in the back of the net, that should be one XG. <laughs> you know? <laughs> it, it, it's a goal. It's one-to-one. How can it not be anything more than that? But I understand what XG is about. And for people who don't, it's like they take, they take the difficultiness of the shot. They take... Uh, how far out you how far out you were uh were you were you pressured um was the goalkeeper standing there or was he dead um you know all those all those matter into xg and that's why when garnacho made that goal uh 2 weeks ago it was like a xg of 0. 0.03 because that shouldn't have happened in theory but it did and it's fantastic um but this game was this game was really fun and and it's good to see City not get three points um, as much as City fans would love to have three points because they love winning championships and stuff like that. But for the rest of everybody else who has a hard time getting points, um, this this was a nice little dent in City's decided run for the first pole position here. Um, what are your thoughts on this game? Um, <laughs> excuse me, I just choked on air. Uh, oh. three three draws in a row. Uh, now for City, so that's I mean that's huge. If we want a title yeah. race this year, they're gonna have to drop as many points as, as possible, get as many of these draws. Hopefully, there's you know a loss or two in there or something like that. Um, City, <clears throat> City, I think are just lacking a little bit of bite defensively. Um, they do they are leaving themselves. Uh, a little bit further out of position than normal. Um, mm-hmm. I, I think that that's something they're they're going to fix. I'm not worried about that at all. They're the defensively. I think they're going to get back. You know, get back together. Um, yeah. Obviously, transitions. Uh, the transition is, the game is where a lot of the um, the easiest you know way to get towards city, get to city and stick it to them is basically in transition, um, off corners, off uh, free kicks, step pieces, stuff like that. Um, yep. I thought Spurs. To be honest with you, I cannot stand the 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 style in which they are dedicated to play because I think it no matter what they do, 
they're going to stick to what they want to do. And and I don't yep. think it's going to be sustainable. Um, obviously, you know, it wasn't against Chelsea. Uh, you look at uh, other matches this year. I mean, it wasn't against Wolves nine, going 90 minutes there. So they mm-hmm. there are, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, there are matches where I think that it fits. And this is one of them because City want to come at you. So it leaves the transition oh, yeah. game open. It leaves open a lot of different avenues uh, to get down to the other goal. Maybe not necessarily the traditional way of, you know, possession and, and playing ones and twos and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But they figure out a way to to um, uh, to get to get those goals. I thought the Kulisevsky one was fantastic. His run from the right Dude. wing uh, for the late equalizer was absolutely fantastic. Kulisevsky um, is so <laughs> slick to watch, and it's like so he's what. And this I said this last week too. He's what man you thought they were getting in Anthony, being able to. You know, actually use his left foot for something more than cutting inside and shooting it, you know, 30 yards into the stands. He's actually a a better capable runner. And I think we lost Woodsy for a little bit. Oh, there he is. Cool. Um, (laughs) And cool. He's he's got such a slick move on him and his ability to whip the ball in with his left foot, whether it's on net or to somebody on the back poster. Um, running through the middle. It's just, it's fun to watch. He's a doofy as hell looking dude, but you know what? That dude doesn't need to know how he looks. All he needs to know is that he can whip a fantastic ball into the box. Ooh. Yeah, and I, oh, I got to say, the, the, um, uh, the defense, I mean, given all the injuries in defense, for um uh for Spurs, I thought they actually played mm-hmm. pretty well. I mean, you look at the goals they gave up. Yeah. Idiot play. I mean, the last one, the idiot idiotic play by Basuma, uh, to even uh to even consider trying to dribble out of three Man City defenders. I thought that was just completely and utterly stupid. Um, I, a lot of their their goals they gave up were mistakes by them. So mm-hmm. uh, obviously the own goal one. So they they. They overall, I thought they played a good game defensively, given that a lot of their stupid plays were the reason why they, you know, gave up a lot of, uh, you know, most of the Man City goals. Um, yeah, I thought Lo Celso played really well um, overall too. But the 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 star of the show was obviously Simon Hooper. Uh, <laughs> guy is Jesus. absolutely atrocious. He yeah. he needs to be sacked. I'm calling for it. The guy needs to be sacked. He's literally been at the hand of two of the most egregious errors in Premier League history. And that's been in the same year within a month and a half from each other. You know, yeah, like two months from each other. So he needs to go. Like, this is not a, a, a joke anymore. You got livelihoods of some of these people on the line, and this guy is deciding it. Uh, and, and it's, and oddly enough, it's the same team each time that gets benefit. So mm-hmm. take with that what you will. But I'm just, I'm just saying there's something that needs to be looked into here because. Fool me once, you know, shame on me. <laughs> Fool me twice, we got a, we got corruptness in the EPL, the PGMOL. So, um, we'll so, see where, where that goes, if anything. But I will say, I don't remember who I read this from, unfortunately. Um, it was some post that I had seen, and he had said it was it was about the Simon Hooper call. And if you guys haven't seen it, at the end of the match, it was like the 89th minute or something like that. Halan gets fouled on a breakaway, but he gets he's able to get back up because he fell. And he was able to uh, hit Jack Grealish on a ball that he would have Grealish would have been onside, and he would have had a breakaway one-on-one with the goalkeeper. Uh, Simon Hooper ends up calling it back to put a foul on the spot instead of giving advantage. Now the guy said and I'm paraphrasing, um, while it might have not gone with how it, you know, it could have looked in the match and, 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 uh, should have he played advantage? Sure. But it's also up to his interpretation as well. It's, it, it's not, and it's going to sound weird. It's not a wrong call because he, you know, he had, he didn't know if Halan was going to be able to get up in time and do that. It's not. I would say it's not. It's not wrong by the rule book, but it's bad. That's, yes, that's it looks say. terrible because 
Grealish had a one-on-one breakaway, and I don't. We don't know what could have happened at that point. He was still thirty yards out, thirty thirty-five yards out. So somebody could have caught up to him. And, he could have missed the shot. And to be honest with you, he's not the fastest. He's not the fastest. No, right. I, I honestly, I think he gets caught. Probably. I think he gets yep. caught. I think Pedro Porro is one of the guys back there. Pretty darn quick. Um, Emerson Royale, another guy, pretty darn quick. Um, yeah. So I, I don't necessarily know if he gets gets back or gets to that gets to that uh, you know goal with one on one. I would think somebody probably throws a challenge and probably takes a red or something. Um, sure. It's a possibility. Did you see the meme where it's Holland's face screaming and it's the Picasso, I think it's Picasso screaming face meme thing, or not meme, painting? But if you haven't seen that, it's freaking hilarious. What's up? I I think is the. uh, Oh, is it? I don't know, art guys. Come on. I barely know the Premier League. I, 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 I. I was so good at those art classes back in the day, man. I not. A, I'm not saying I'm not uh, a fan of art, like but it. like, good God, I I'm not gonna be able to know stuff. Art and writing, forget about it. Because <laughs> obviously, if you've listened to me talk, I definitely am educated. Uh, <laughs> so, I think this the match overall was a good match, and I think that fans of a neutral tone. Really enjoyed it, but if you were a fan of either one of those clubs, you're probably left with a little bit of um, a little more desire in it because of the way it ended. It was a little anticlimactic in some sense, but um, that'd be the dice, yo. Uh, let's move on to what did I have queued up here? Oh, the Fulham Liverpool match that was super fun. That was another fun match. We've had a lot of fun matches. Back to back to back. Guys, Woodsy wasn't wrong. The Premier League is hot right now. It has been extremely yeah. fun to watch. I mean, look, we got we we had a controversial match with City and Spurs. We had an amazing, I, I wouldn't say amazing, but it was a really good match because we didn't expect Fulham to be like this against Liverpool at Anfield. And then we got a match today, Tuesday, the 5th of December, where Luton Town is drawing currently with Arsenal. Who expects this? Nobody. I I mean, I already told you I thought it was going to be a 4-0 win for Arsenal, but um this match was this match was crazy because the sorry, excuse me, the Liverpool Fulham match was crazy because oh, nice save by Kaminsky. Um Liverpool didn't if how do I want to put this? It felt like Liverpool walked into Anfield and said, we're going to win this match, but because Fulham roll over. And then we're just going to concentrate on the next match. That's how I felt that match played out. And I thought Fulham really, Fulham and Marco Silva really took it to, uh, Jesus, do I know my teams? No. (laughs) They really took it to Liverpool. Hammer, it? <laughs> I don't know, man. I might as well be hammered. Um, they really took it to Liverpool and Anfield. Quiet down that that whole entire stadium. It didn't feel like oh, what a shot. Um, just missed wide for Trossard. Uh, really took it to Liverpool and quieted the fans. And typically, when you go to Anfield, and when you think of Anfield, it's a it is a fortress. It is a very loud place. It hops. And Fulham really quieted that whole entire that whole entire arena of field venue. And credit for Liverpool for not lying down either and being like, well, today's not our day. We're just going to pack it up and call it a day. And Liverpool ended up, you know, with I, th- I think every goal aside from Trent's free kick was a worldie. Because... Trent's free kick that, wouldn't have gone goal. in. It wouldn't have gone in if Leno didn't actually dive. If he had just stood rooted, that thing's coming out. But, yeah. you know, you can't just do that and hit him in the back and it went in. Um, is is there any feeling that Liverpool is showing any chink in an armor? Because I don't think so. I think this was just kind of a weird one-off. And... You know, they were kind of looking ahead towards the next match, and they almost got caught out of it, caught out 
from it? So I think that's kind of been their their MO the last couple of years, especially when it comes to the, the years that they've been chasing City for, for titles. They'll they'll have these games that are, you know, you, you look at them on paper and whether they're home or away, they look like Liverpool should be, you know, walking away with this one easily with three points. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, they come out of it with a draw or they come out of it with a loss and, you know, it ends up being one of the matches that decides the title. Um, you know, yeah. a couple of years ago it was Spurs. We had two matches against Spurs that we drew both of them. Probably should have won both of them. You know, we, we had Brighton two years ago. Definitely should have yep. won that one. Um, it's 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 every 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 year we're in the title race. We have a couple of these, and it's always early in the season, never late, um, which is which is always weird. Um, it's usually before before Christmas. Um, but I I don't necessarily think I see a, a massive weakness in Liverpool. Yeah. My my concern is that if the injuries start piling up like they're about to. Uh, obviously, Allison is out. <laughs> Jogo Jota's hamstring. Uh, Joel Matip may be out. I mean, the rumors are he may be out for five months, four or five months. Yikes! Um, Yikes! They they don't know if it's the the knee, uh, which knee ligament. Uh, I guess they're yeah. still waiting for scans back on that. He's mm. supposed to be going for that tomorrow. Uh, Not good. So. Those, those are three big ones. Joel Matip, I think, has been immense this year. He's probably been – if Virgil van Dijk's been the best center back in the Prem this year, which he, I think he clearly is, um, Joel Matip is probably two, three, or four steps behind him. He's right there. He's been fantastic this year. Mm-hmm. Um, I would even go as far as saying that the, the one thing that I think Liverpool need to improve on, uh, one is their full – when their fullbacks are defending, their fullbacks need to be tighter. Uh, yeah. on the defense, uh, need to be tighter, closer to the box. They are spreading themselves out wide, which is normally the way they, they play. Um, so I get why, you know, it still keeps happening. But, you know, you look at the issues that over the last couple of weeks and over the last couple of years, it's kind of really been the same thing with the fullbacks with their deficiencies defensively. Um, thankfully, Andy Robertson, you know, hopefully coming back uh, in the new year mm. uh, after that that uh, shoulder dislocation. So that'll be, that'll be a big get. But uh, the thing that looked like, the, the, the one thing I questioned going into this year, considering what happened last year, uh, was Klopp's game management uh, because he didn't have necessarily all the weapons that he has now at his disposal uh, mm-hmm. last year. So yeah, yeah. He's now got the ability to take off a, a Dominic Zabaslai, to take off, off a McAllister after 65 minutes and a mm-hmm. game at 2-2 and still go, you know being able to bring on a, a Harvey Elliott, a Curtis Jones – a um, you know Gravenberg started. He looked great. Uh, mm-hmm. He has more at his disposal this year than he's had for quite some time. I would say probably a good three four years easily. Um, so I, I do think that the the depth is way better. I still think we're missing maybe another number a number six a solid number six uh, a, a Paulinia type that can break up the tackles Oof. break up the lines. Yeah. Be solid in front of those those two defenders because you look at you know mm-hmm. when Fabinho was in his prime. I mean that was you weren't getting to that defense. You could think about getting to Virgil Van Dyke all day, but you got to yep. get there first, and you got to get past yeah. Fabinho, and you got to get past you with all of them. You know guys like that. And now it's 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 not as easy as it was last year. Uh, I'll say mm-hmm. that McAllister playing the six is fantastic when he's playing with Gravenberg and with Zabel's slide. They are rotating a lot now too, which I kind of like. Um, yep. So they they do they do have a couple weaknesses. I'm not going to say that they're they're as bad as other weaknesses that they've had in the past have been, but they sure. they're there and and they're not as susceptible to those weaknesses as they have been you know last year too. So I think they've kind of learned a little bit. Um, but I would definitely say a number six probably getting a number six in January, and then maybe even another center back uh, just to shore up that. That line, you know, maybe get a Incapié or a uh, Antonio Silva or somebody like that that can basically mm-hmm. step right in. If they're young enough where they can take over, you know, three, four, five years down the road when Virgil likely, you know, ends his ends his career or whatever. Um, because he's you know 32, 33 years old. So, mm-hmm. um, I would I would say that there's not much there, but uh, you know, it's the it's the the big games coming up or the you know against Newcastle, Arsenal. Uh, United, those are the games that I'm, I'm looking at. I'm interested to see if a we stick with what we're doing, which I think works yeah. right now, but it does leave us susceptible at times, 
or do they change things up a little bit? Do we do a four, two, three, one, or do we do a, a, um, you know, maybe a, almost like a five at the back with three center backs, Joe Gomez back there, let the wingers mm-hmm. or the, the full backs fly up the, up the wings there. So I'm interested to see if we do change things up a little bit more rotation, but um, otherwise I, the games are fun, man. Bunch of worldies uh, this week. McAllister's mm-hmm. goal, I'll be honest, I, I've never seen four goals in one game that are that high caliber from my team, I think, since since I've been – I can't name one. I can't name one. Uh, I can't no, name a game it. that's had those. And the, and the, the opposite end of the thing, things, if you look at all the goals uh, Fulham scored, they were all in the six-yard box. So yes, Liverpool scored were. three from outside the box, one on the eighteen. And if you total up the distance from all of Fulham's goals, they still don't equal the the amount of distance that our closest goal had. <laughs> it's just the yeah, yeah. weirdest thing. But I think I think Trent, yeah, Trent is 18. So these guys, I mean, at most they got what 15 yards or 16 yards, something like that. So yeah. Um yeah, I feel like I feel like this is uh what we got two minutes left in this uh Arsenal game now. Arsenal basically throwing it all yeah, out Luton Town here. I have been eyeing this matchup for a long uh while you were chatting. Um, oh, that was terrible ball. And, um, anyway, so like I said about Luton Town earlier, if they even if they come out with a draw or even a loss and score three goals, no, oh, that's out of play. You carry that out of play. Anyway, um, as a Fulham fan, do you feel good after you know losing at Anfield? having the lead and then uh, losing the lead in the last few minutes, but still being able to put three goals up, which is something that your team hasn't been able to do. I don't think at all this season, I think maybe one other time they've been able to put up three goals, three goals against I mean, they, they uh, the wolves. Lead, but look at the caliber of the three. I mean, it's, you got you got two of them from set pieces and one of them just from a, a fantastic run. And, and I would be honest with you, I thought Quinn McKellar, Liverpool goalkeeper, yeah, yeah. Was, probably looked like one of the worst goalkeepers in the league. If you were just to he take that game, he looked awful. Absolutely awful. Positioning wise, his feet were never really set and most of those goals. Yeah. He never really yep. looked like he was taking up a lot of space like a lot of goalkeepers do. He put himself in bad situations. And I and I I honestly thought is his goalkeeping overall was was horrendous, um, and it uh, doesn't it doesn't shock me if uh, if you know Allison gets back quicker than than they probably thought. <laughs> um, I think he's definitely going to be back for that United game, but uh, I would not surprise me one bit if if Allison Becker starts Saturday the ninth against uh, Crystal Palace. But as a so. I don't know if you really answered because I was kind of skimming some stuff here. Uh, as a Fulham fan, do you still? Oh Jesus! Who put that in? Declan Rice just hit the winner in the ninety in the ninety seventh minute for Arsenal. Oh, Arsenal Game just come away with the. Game oh, been we need to. We have to sit back and see what VAR says, but. Um... That's a big blow to Luton Town right there. That's that's exactly what had happened. How did they not blow that, the, that was. How did they not blow the whistle in the? Uh, I don't really know. I think there was a few other fouls and balls let out of out of bounds that they. Oh, that wasn't a very friendly uh, toss up to the camera right there. Anyway, um, so I'm I'm thinking as a if I was a Fulham fan, I, I would feel out of this match, I would feel a little disappointed that we didn't come away with a point because we were leading and then they came Liverpool came back and drew and then eventually went on to win. However, you have had two games in a row where you've scored three three goals, where prior to that you had two matches or two matches. Oh, he's on side too. Declan Rice is on side. Um, prior to those two matches, you've had two other games where you've only put in a max of three goals. I, I think you feel a little bit better about yourself about your team and you you'll still be at the mid mid bottom table but you know you're not going to feel like you're going to be scrapping it with a relegation you know that 17 18 
area down there. So I think Fulham fans should feel a little bit better after these last two uh, matches that they had, uh, one against the Wolves and, and Liverpool here. Um, they could actually go out. Wow. And the whistle had blown right after that Arsenal goal too. That was insane. Uh, I'm pretty sure everybody at the Schenectady Beer Garden for the Albany Gooners group has just lost their mind. Uh, beers are probably being tossed. I'm pretty sure Rhett just commented to the group and he said rice, rice, baby with a gif. Um, I think I think Fulham, I, personally, I don't like Marco Silva. I think he's kind of a bland coach, and I think that signing him for five more years or whatever his extension was until 2025, 2025 or 2026 was a terrible decision. Um, I think he, it's not – his his style of play doesn't really bode well, although not having a consistent striker also kind of goes against being able to score goals and, and whatnot. But um, I think this is kind of like a turn of the page. It's starting to turn the page for Fulham. They shouldn't have to worry so much about the relegation scrap, and that that's where I was trying to get with it. Um, but we'll see how I, I mean, the rest of this, the their season goes. Worried about, but I, I would say it's more so, more so being able to keep the team together. Because um, this team, well, I mean, obviously financially speaking, they're they're not in the best of states. You know, they're closer to a Wolves than they are, you know, uh, uh, like an Aston Villa or somebody like that. So yeah, I, I think it's a matter of putting together and actually being able to replenish the squad because. You know, they're going to probably lose Paulinia in January, I would think, uh, whether no it's doubt. Bayern Munich or, or Liverpool or somebody like that, whoever knows. Um, but I would probably say that in order for them to, to you know, keep this going, they will they will need to uh, to invest. And, and from a team that, that monetarily speaking isn't the best right now and, you know, hasn't really invested in the past, you know, they – they were they got rid of a striker for what 30 million, 25 million, and replaced him with a guy for four million. You know, like yeah, it doesn't make sense how they how they operate like that and just don't spend. So I think they're gonna have to do something like that um in order for, for this to um to to carry on, at least for the rest of the you know, to the end of the season. I want to quickly touch on uh Bournemouth and then jump into manager player of the month because i think those will be quick um i just want to do a broad brush stroke for bournemouth here I, I think that bournemouth you're starting to see uh i don't remember his name and i don't really want to botch it but i certainly will because you know for the views uh i think his name is Ar- ariel right ariel um their manager uh, ariel can... ariel there we go okay so i, I think we're starting to see his his uh, game plan coming to work. The last few matches, you know, you start. I mean, he got nominated. Um, and personally, I'm going to leak a little bit here. I think he should win manager of the month. Per- personally, he he had a very phenomenal um, November. I had to think of which month it was. Uh, he's. I think he was able to get nine or hold on twelve of. 15 possible points in the last five matches. So he's been doing extremely well. Uh, I think we're starting to see the players buy into his philosophy and uh, the attacking players with Semenyo. He looks nasty. Semenyo, look, he absolutely, like whatever they paid for him wasn't nearly enough. And whoever sold it to them, to Bournemouth, did not get enough is what I'm trying to say. Uh, Solanke finally looking like somebody who can actually do some work. Uh, I, I'm personally not a Solanke fan. I still think he's a little underwhelming, but he's starting to to live to a little bit of the hype he had at Liverpool for that time being. Um, and I really only think they're going to get better because they got Tyler Adams who's injured. He probably won't be back till later in January, February. They got Alex Scott, who they signed from Bristol City, who's supposed to be absolutely like top-notch kind of well-rated player. So he'll that that'll only uh, boost their squad up. Marcus Tavernier, as long as he doesn't get injured, looks pretty solid. He's I feel like he's kind of like a a low-tier Pedro Pedro Neto kind of 
winger. Um, but Bournemouth have definitely been turning turning around. And uh, as if if a fan of Bournemouth were to ask me, you know, do you see us getting relegated? I do not. Um, I actually could see them. I'm gonna actually hold that for a true false if we get to it. But um, point is, is they're they're gonna be okay. I, I think they'll be okay. I really like. Uh, I think my my favorite player. I, I might have said it once or twice on here. Uh, is on their team right now is Milos Kirkas, the left back. Um, had the assist to Dominic oh. Solanke this week. Got the yes. You know, he, he took a a long ball and uh, you know got it back to his teammate. Teammate gives it back to him. He goes down the the left side there and puts a nice yep. uh, threaded ball through into uh, uh, Solanke. I think that kid man, very young. I think he's only twenty years old. Uh, it's such a talent, like a class, you know, he looks like one of those young attacking fullbacks that you, you visualize growing up and being an Andy Robertson, you know, yes. looking like a, um, uh, uh, a full on like premier league talent, top tier left back. Um, yeah, yeah. he has little glimpses every now and then does have his errors. I'm not going to lie. He does have his errors and For it's sure. a little bit more so defensive. Um, but but I, I do think that this kid is um, is probably one of the more promising kids on that team uh, to, to watch out for. Him and, and obviously Alex Scott, I think, is another one too. Uh, yep. I know he's he's kind of on and off with the injury woes, but uh, for the most part, I think he's he's been absolutely great this year when he's been playing too. Um, so, but but yeah, you're right, Salaki. You know, I was I was kind of hoping he would he would uh, you know hit at Liverpool. He, he had a decent, you know, decent time there. Not really, you know, spectacular. Um, yeah. got a few, a few, you know, nice assists here and there scored. I think it was the last game of the year. His first year, uh, scored a, uh, uh, a goal, uh, just before the champions league finally. He was, he was, he was great that game. Worldly too, like a top bin near post, uh, type runners on the right hand side it was nice. Mm-hmm. Um, but he's uh he he's finally I think he's growing into the like you know what a striker needs to do have the striker that that so called strikers mentality that's yep. that's what I think he's finally he's finally figuring out. I agree. I totally agree with that. Um, so like I said, uh, manager of the month for uh, November is Ariel. Um, not is I should say he is a nominee. We don't know that if he wins or not, I, we don't have that kind of leakability. Also, it's a fan vote. So, you know, vote him if you like him. Uh, also up there, you're right, Eric will, Ten- you're right, will probably be my choice. I see. I like shooting for the underdog cause it's nice, but you know, who also had a really good month too, unfortunately was man United and 10 hog had uh, three wins, no loss, no draws picked up a goal differential of plus five. So I, I, by definition, he should win. I don't want that to be true because I think Ariola definitely has taken a, a squad that is significantly worse than United and have gotten two wins and a loss out of that and has has made Bournemouth look a lot better in these la- in last month and into this month as well. Um, Eddie Howe is another nominee. Uh, he has two wins and a loss to his name. Um, and Rob Edwards, who I also thought should, could get a nice nomination, but, um, one win, one draw, one loss probably won't see you get the actual award. Uh, It is nice to see Luton town, a manager who, like we had said, um, kind of is the worst team to get promoted in a long time to be nominated. I mean, they definitely had a good month. Um, I, I think that even if he doesn't get it, it, it's, it's good to see Luton on a map. That's kind of where I'm getting with. Um, but like you yeah. said, like we're both, we're in the same camp. I think Ariola should, could feel like they should get it for, the players of the month, we have Jeremy Doku, who had one goal and four assists. Anthony Rob Gordon. Where is Anthony Robinson? Oh, I have no idea where that came from. Anyway, 
some regen, apparently. Uh, he had two goals, one assist. Uh, <laughs> top, huh? Anthony. Oh, Pull him. oh yeah! Holy shit! <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. I was thinking so. It, Anthony. So I just kind of chopped off my like. It just wasn't in my peripheral. I don't know. I just I, I deserve a yellow card on that. I don't know if any of you can see that. There you go. I deserve a yellow card. Anyway, um, <laughs> <laughs> Anthony Gordon had two goals and one assist. Tom Kaminsky, the goal goalkeeper for Luton, and this is why Luton's manager was up there. Had um, I don't know, fifteen shots save, fifteen saves, no clean sheets. Oops, I just clicked out of that. I didn't mean to. Harry Maguire is up there. Gross. Um, I had three clean sheets. Again, I don't think. Uh, no, just no. Uh, Raheem Sterling, two goals, one assist, and Marcus Tavernier, another Barmouth uh, nomination here, had two goals, no assists. Um, I don't know. I, I really don't know who to vote for. If I were to vote for any of these players, where do you sit? Yeah, I mean, I, I guess I'd go Doku. I think he he had the most influence. I mean, you look at, uh, I mean, he did a, he did all his work in in two of those games. I mean. Not he yeah. only played three. He didn't do anything in the, in the Liverpool game that I thought was, you know, good enough. I mean, a lot of times that he dribbled past somebody, he was actually dribbling backwards towards his own net. So, yeah. um, I, I I don't really think that a lot of the other guys really are are that deserving. It'll probably end up going to Anthony Gordon because that's he's who I was um, actually. I was going to actually say Anthony Gordon through. would get my vote personally. So I would choose Goku. I, I'm I'm going to. It's fair. He had a really good month. I mean, there's no doubt. There's no doubt about that. Um, four assists is definitely something to do, and it, that's really hard. And the goal, getting a goal, is also really hard to do in the Premier League or any league for that matter. Um, I, I just think that Gordon is probably going to get it because they've that Newcastle team looked better than the city team so and gordon's goals were more weighted than doku's four assists that that's where i sit that's where yeah. i sit with that yeah i, can so. see that. I mean they were um, they're more influential obviously you get two of those i think we were his winners right the, yeah uh, obviously, obviously you i got think the arsenal the, i think both of them and then the man united or no, maybe yeah. I was that was December. I'm not really sure. Hold on. Um, I'm not gonna bother looking it up because I wasn't prepared for that question. So um we're gonna shuffle into match day fifteen. <laughs> uh we've already gotten two games, like I'd said at the top of the hour. Um it, we've got we had the Wolves um uh, Burnley, Wolves ended up winning, and then in dramatic fashion, Arsenal beat Luton Town three to four. Um, Declan Rice getting the winner in the 97th minute. Um, there was a little bit of controversy for that one too, because there I don't know if you caught where they were looking at the VAR in around the 80th ish minute, where Gabriel had his jersey like it was pulled so far away. I think the fabric was screaming, and then the other foul was. <laughs> I, um, I think the fabric Saka. is screaming in general because of the color. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so they, those are the two games that have been played on Tuesday. We're recording on Tuesday, so that's why I'm saying these things. Um, for the rest of the matches, um, we've got Brighton and Brentford tomorrow, Crystal Palace, Bournemouth, Fulham, Forest, Sheffield United and Liverpool, Aston Villa and Man City, and United and Chelsea. And then Thursday, we have Everton and Newcastle and Spurs and United to wrap up the rest of the match day 15. Um, personally, I'm excited for, well, you know, I'm over here, over here. The, the obvious team I root for, Aston Villa and City. I think a lot of play, uh, people are as well. Um, surprisingly, it's not on... NBC, it's on Peacock, which also I'm totally happy with because, like I've said before, I think everything should be played on Peacock. If you have subscription to Peacock, 
and you shouldn't get blackout rights like that. But who am I to say? I'm not a rich guy. I don't make a ton of money, and I don't make money hand over fist. Um, is there anything you are interested in seeing during this match day 15? There, there's two of them. I think the obvious one for me that I want to see is Villa and City. Um, I think that's that's probably the the game of the week in my, my opinion. Uh, yeah, I, Villa coming off a game where where I thought they I thought they played better than the pro- score probably showed it. Um, and then City, I think you know four draws in a row is that possible? <laughs> like <laughs> I hope it is. No, it's going to be a loss. That would be a, a big uh, a big step for. <laughs> Well, hey, I'd, I'd love that even more, man. I'd love that even more. Uh, uh, man United and Chelsea, I think, is the other one uh, that I'm really interested to see, which team can mm-hmm. suck uh, less. Um, less, yeah. That'll be, that'll be tough for that one. And there's going to be a red card in that one, right? There's got to be a red card in that, I, w- I would think. Who um, is? Let's find out. Chelsea, the... red card oh, it's Chris Kavanaugh. Absolutely, um, there's going to be a red card. There's going to be a VAR controversy because it's Chris Kavanaugh. And there's 100% going to be a red card. And I will call it right now. Uh, Bruno Fernandez gets that red card. Ooh, uh, I'm going to say it's against Chelsea because they've had two red cards in their last two matches. Um, both of them by by their club captain. So with that being said, whoever the hell captains Chelsea this week is probably going to get a red card. So that's what I'm going with. <laughs> Please don't let it be Cole Palmer. I think I started him in my uh, fantasy <laughs> Premier League team this week. So let's not be Cole Palmer. I got, I got um, a feeling it, uh, it's probably going to end up being, uh, being Reese James. I think he's going to be back and get another red card. If not him, maybe Enzo <laughs> Fernandez. He's due for red. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, yeah. So outside of those two, I I don't know. I guess I'd like to see if I don't know. I feel like we got treated with the Luton Town Arsenal match, and that that I don't need to be excited any any more than other than outside of the Aston Villa and City one, and who can suck less, United or Chelsea. I, I feel like. That was a nice treat, and I'm okay with how the rest of this week looks, personally. Um, Maybe Brighton, just to see if they, you know, are still in that free-fall-ish era part. You know, if Brentford can still continue scoring uh, goals and take advantage of a, a Brighton team who's been a little bit lackluster. Um. I mean, I'd like just to see how many goals Liverpool is going to score on Sheffield United. That that one should be interesting. Uh, uh, I was just although it is off of dirt. Go ahead. I was just looking at the the, uh, the injury report for uh, for Sheffield United, and they're missing three defenders. So, Oof. It, and remember, Ali McBurney is also is also suspended for a red card against Burnley. So yeah. it's yeah. That's... I, I don't know how Liverpool is going to play this one. This is one that I think you can kind of compare to a lot of the cup games you get, like midweek cup games. Yeah. Um, so I, I could see them going a little bit weaker in midfield and maybe move Joe Gomez to left back or something like that. But uh, sure. I, I think as long as, as long as you're starting Mo Salah and you're starting probably Darwin Nunez or, or Cody Gakpo, like yep. you're you're gonna get at least three goals here. I would think. So for teams who don't have to play European competitions. Um, does this actually help these teams that don't have to play or hurt? Do you know what I mean? Like, so teams that play the European competition, they have a little bit of a turn. Like, they, they have a turnover over already built, and there's a little bit of chemistry going on. And now teams that don't have that European or tournament, um, that, that, that tournament turnover, you know they have to play with players or squ- squad combinations that they don't normally play with. So, is that a I would does that hinder those teams? I'd say probably, probably not. And I, I'd say the re- reason being this way: you're you're also putting more stress on the teams at the top of the table that are playing in those competitions that now yeah, have yeah. to you know turn around midweek, three weeks in a row, midweek, and play a game. Uh, you know, so I, I don't think that's 
not that it's not every week that they that happens. You know, it's it's quite mm-hmm. it's quite rare. Uh, I think it only happens like two or th- three times in the entire calendar. Uh, and, and this is the first one. So yep. I would say that this is probably uh, this is probably the the uh, harder for those teams that are also they're trying to rotate. You know, they're trying to get rest yeah. of some guys. They're trying to to make it easier for themselves. Uh, I would say, if anything, too, and you also got to consider this: those teams that aren't in Europe also now have to play in the FA Cup. They also have to play the EFL Cup if they're still in it. So the yep. cup the cup ties are still you know alive for a lot of these teams. So uh, I would say that they probably have have a, a worse go of it because they're not able to rotate. They're not able to really sure. uh, you know take care of their injured their injured players to get them back sooner for, mm-hmm. for bigger games because their games are just flying at them left and right now, which they normally aren't. So I, I would say it's it's hard for everybody. Um, and uh, I wish we had less games in the calendar because I think we'd get better yep. quality football, but it's all about the money, right? It is certainly about that money. Um, I don't have... Oh, I do have one true false if we want to do. I don't have any other true false other than this one true false. Um, I got one. Bournemouth. Bournemouth, by the end of the calendar year, will be 10th. So, all right, hold on. I I should look up the. I know what the rest of. I know what their schedule is, but I got to quickly look at it again. It is soft, I will say. They so they play Crystal Palace. Uh, they play United. They play Luton. They play Forest. And to wrap out the end of the year, they play Fulham. Now, if they play like they did against How many Aston points Villa, by 10th are they? they are only. That is goal differential. You shouldn't look at that. Uh, six points. But with goal differential, technically, even if they were to tie on points, draw on points, then whoever is got a better GD would be better ahead of Bournemouth. Um, so they would have to win points outright, essentially, is what I'm trying to get at. So I'd say considering Chelsea have a tough schedule, and Chelsea I know is in 10th right now, right? Correct. Chelsea I would probably and- say... Yeah, you know what? I'm going to change my mind. I'm going to say true. I think they will be tenth. I think they'll be tenth. It's the neat. Dot. I think Chelsea will. Be, I think they'll be alive. I think that's a neat uh, occurrence we're having with Bournemouth, who's got a, a um, man, manager who knows how to coach. Because I think uh, Scott Parker was terrible last year. They had some other guy, and then they had Gary O'Neill, who was competent enough to keep them in the Premier League. Uh, and now they actually go out and get a guy that seems to know what they're doing and knows how to navigate the middle of the table um, battles and stuff like that. So I, I think this that that would be fun. And I think that I think my statement's true too is what I'm trying to get at. <laughs> <laughs> I Hit me with you. Uh, all right. So um, where was I going to go with this? Oh. Uh, so we just had our first, you know, manager fired, uh, with mm. Paul Heckenbottom. So, Certainly uh, will there be one more firing before Christmas? True or false? Where would I see it? Um, I'm going to go with false, to be honest. Um, I think Burnley will still stick with uh, Vincent Kompany. I-, I think that would be absolutely stupid to fire him. Uh, I think Rob Edwards stays in Luton Town again. I think that's very stupid or and naive to fire him, especially with how connected he is with the fans. Um, the other spot I assume you're talking, you're leaning towards, would be Eric Ten Hag, and I think that getting rid of Ten Hag also doesn't make any sense currently because it's like who else are you looking for at this point? Um, I think that'd be more of a summer fire. Yeah than a, a winter sacking. Yeah, I can I can see that. I, I I'm gonna say it's false, but I'm gonna say I'm gonna say there's at least one firing in January. Uh, and I think I, that's that's almost a guarantee. Um 
the reason why I'm, I'm leaning towards January and I think teams will wait. Uh, one, obviously, transfer window opens up. Uh, yeah. But two, there's also that Premier League break that's coming. Uh, and I think teams will reassess mm. during that break and see if there's somebody out there that they think can get in to, you know, maybe avoid relegation. Um, sure. I, I do think eventually, I, I do think, I think Burnley will be a, will be an opening at some point this season. Uh, and I, I think that Manchester United, whether it's, it's now or whether it's in the off season or whether it's even next year, Ten Hag yeah. is not the guy for them. Like they, they need to understand that this is, this is a, it's a culture change and it's, it's, it needs to happen at the top, but the, the coaches they've had there, I mean, they want to be that guy. They want to. They want to be Sir Alex. They can't. They yeah. can't. They need to get that off their uh, off their mind. I mean, they they all try to you know be him and do the United way and and like come on now. Bring Just your own a, culture. Bring your own identity. That's all. Yeah. 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 Uh, if they, they'd be, I'll tell you what. If they had Ange plus the Kogu, they'd be way better than what they are right now. I don't know if that's necessarily true because I think that they would still. Want, I think there's a sense of uh, bad culture right now, like we, you and we have always talked about that, like you just said, that everybody wants to be Sir Alex Ferguson. And it's not just, it's not just the manager coming in. It's the, the back staff, the, the owners, the high ranking officials in that, in that, club that wanted to be the way it was and it's hard for them to see any but anything else other than that and and they would press to try to fit that mold whoever it was that they would bring in and i think that's what they're doing with or did to ten hog and i think that's why there was a successful season initially because he did what he wanted and now we're seeing, I think, a, a little bit of venom in the veins, and not in a good way. Where Ten Hag's starting to die a little bit because he's not able to do what he wants to do, or he's not being able to see yeah, as man. what he wants to do. I, I would also even point out, though, I mean, it's if it, if it's anybody's fault, it is. I mean, he's he's spent over you know four or five hundred million pounds worth of of money on. On the players he wanted to bring in. I mean, look at Andre Onana is is one of the worst goalkeepers in the Prem right now. Oh, is some terrible. of the stats may not show it to you, but considering he's giving up game winning goals nearly week in week out uh, by himself, Powers. like like you look at we'll just look at the Galatasaray Champions League. Like that guy Powers. gave up all three goals. He had a hat trick. He gave yeah. he a goalkeeper hat trick. So um, I would say Onana, I mean, is one of them. Uh, uh, I mean, it might be one of the ones ever in Premier League history. Uh, Rasmus Hoyland still hasn't scored a, a Premier League goal. Um, I don't know how, because uh, I think he's he's actually a pretty decent player, but he has. Marcus Rashford has diminished, you know, since he he came in. You know, he had that one run last year where he bailed them out. Uh, he's diminished. Um, you look at Rafael Varane. You look at Casemiro. He brought in Casemiro. I mean, the, these yeah. these guys like. They want to create a culture, and they want to do it the way that, that United traditionally done things. But you need to find the players that play a certain style, stick to that style. And and that's why I think, you know, Andrew's a little bit more successful, despite the 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 hindrances in the style of play that he likes to play and, and yeah. the, the frailties he has and that comes with it. He's able to still get the guys to play and commit to that style of football. I, don't, I couldn't tell you the style of football Ten Hag's playing. No, exactly. I I agree with that too, um, but I I think there's just so much magnification on being a United manager, more so because of the the twenty prem trophy. Well, not twenty prem trophies, twenty trophies between the first division and prem. The the amount of FA cups they won, the three Champions Leagues, and it's like we have this history and you need to follow this history because of this is how it's worked out for us. And in the last nine, 10 years, it hasn't been that way. And they've just circled the, they circled the drain. And um, I, I don't know what is going to be able to fix them other than just tearing down old Trafford and building it again. 
Uh, I got another. I got another true or false for you. Um, sure. This will be the last one because then we'll wrap true it up or false, here. Luton Town will beat one of Arsenal, City, Liverpool, or United by the end of the season. If you tell me that they play like they did every match against those teams at home, the way they played Arsenal, then that's true. But I don't think they can keep up that kind of intensity and and uh, that, that style of play. So I'm going to go with false. They've got they've got Manchester City on the on the weekend, I believe, at home. Uh, I think it's at home. Uh, so I mean, they they've got a chance right away to to bounce back after the the Arsenal uh, tough defeat there. So, um, I, I I'm gonna say true, and I think it's yeah. gonna be because there's gonna be something going on in Manchester United, and that's gonna be that's gonna be the one, uh, and I think Fair that'll enough. be the game that ends up getting you know ten high. The, the boot essentially at the end of the season. So, well, that would be um, me. I, I, I'm going to go yes. <laughs> All right. Sure. Fair I'm enough. Go true. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yes or false. <laughs> yes or false. <laughs> All right, everybody. That has been another episode of Swinging at Shins. If you have stuck around with us that long, this long at the hour 10 mark, we appreciate it. Thank you so much. Um, if you could please like, subscribe rate us um berate us give us f a comment on us how we're doing all that hot jazz we would really appreciate it um we love fan interaction and or you know i appreciate i mean i would appreciate if you guys were fans um that kind of interaction so um check us on all platforms we are on youtube spotify apple wherever anchor decides to drop us iHeartRadio, i think is another one we're on so we're all over the place if you guys want to you know hear our lovely sultry voices or uh, see our ugly mugs we're out there um this has again been another episode of swinging at shins you have aaron and woodsy adios everybody Hello, everyone. Thank you very much for listening. Links for anything that you could be interested in, whether it's the YouTube channel, our podcast links, our social media links, everything's in the description below. Thank you very much for listening.